you got to get clear on what it is that you want. And what most people come to me and they just say, Julie, I don't know what I want. So like, how can I get what I want? Because I don't know what I want. And what I always say back is like, well, of course you know what you want because you know what you don't want. everybody what's up and welcome back to this week's episode of it takes grit super excited uh to have this lady on the show this week because i know that we're always asking like how do we get what we want how do you get what you want and i'm so blessed because we have an amazing mutual friend rory baden who introduced us um and julie solomon is a book is well it's going to be out by the time that this podcast is out uh so so excited to uh, to share with you a little bit about her book and the grit that it's taken her to get to where she is today. So Julie, welcome to the show. Thank you uh, so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So excited. And uh, I love it. I love it. You're actually, I have my book, but yours is the first person I've interviewed where I've got to use my new shelf in my studio. And I was so excited. I was like, I've got her book. I'm going to put it on the shelf. It's going to look amazing. You've got yours in the background as well. So like, um, absolutely loving it. So let's, let's get started because you know, now you've got this book that's out and it's a big deal having a book out. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of your own person. I mean, it's, it's like a reflection of your, of yourself. Um, but let's take us back. Like who, who, who is Julie? Where did you grow up and how did you get to where you are today? Yes. So my name is Julie Solomon. I, if um, anyone has, you know, been on social media for a while they might have seen me or maybe they've seen my podcast or heard about it i'm the the co-host of the influencer podcast and in in the simplest terms i help people start grow and monetize their brands their personal brands their online brands um, their businesses which i also kind of use both of those words uh in a lot of ways in order to grow a business i think that you do have to have a brand within that that is also growing um and who i tend to serve are people that identify as content creators, coaches, business owners, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, influencers. Um, you know, I, the word blogger and YouTuber used to be a big one, but now they kind of fall into that content creator uh, space. And that's really where my journey started, or actually before that. I'm originally from a small town in Tennessee, grew up very humble beginnings. Um, my parents both didn't go to college. They, My mom got married and pregnant to my father very young, um, very blue collar. My dad worked at an auto factory pretty much his whole working career. Um, you know, my mom was in sales, but a lot of kind of hustling and grinding. They both didn't have a lot to start with. Um, you know, my grandmother grew up in a trailer, so I'm, I'm kind of like a kid that used to hang out, you know, in the double wide trailer and always had this dream of of wanting more and this idea of there has to be more to this and what's possible and being from a really small town i would have these dreams of traveling the world and of course we didn't have any money to do all of that but it was it was these these dreams that i had and i think that growing up the way that i did it allowed me to see very early on the kind of grit that is needed to not only you know, really what was reflected back to me is to survive, but I wanted to take that to a, to a new level of thriving. So with my family, they had no choice but to have grit. Like they had to put food on the table. They had to figure it out. They had to pay bills. They had mouths to feed. And so there was a lot of resilience and resoluteness and just, you know, you got to figure it out. There is no other option. There is no plan B. No one is coming to save you. So, you know, cry for five minutes, suck it up and move forward. And so with that, you know, it, it, it instilled this, this resilience and this, this hunger in me to want that, you know, there were also kind of some downsides to that. It, it's, it was hard for me for a very long time to, you know, be vulnerable, to open myself up because, you know, I, I didn't have time to be because I was doing all the time. And, you know, I talk a lot about that in my book and how 
I feel like a lot of times our greatest strengths can also be our greatest defects. And so that relentlessness has been a great strength of mine, but it can also be a huge defect. Um, because of my upbringing, I had a lot of issues around my worthiness with money, around my worthiness with abundance, around believing that I was worthy. You know, I would have these dreams of like, I want to be able to get, you know, I want to be able to travel the world. I want to have this thriving business. I want to work for myself. I want to make millions of dollars. But then underneath that was this old story, you know, whether I even consciously realized it or not. And it's still, to be honest with you, Rebecca, I still have to catch myself in the awareness. It still comes up sometimes of like, do I really feel worthy for what it is that I want? for that small voice, that desire, that wish, that that longing, and do I really feel worthy of it? And can my energy match that? And so along the path of, of discovering all of this, um, my background started in PR. I was a music and book publicist in corporate and, and agency America for about 10 years before I got into the online space. And what that allowed me to do is really understand the dynamics and the foundations of marketing and PR. Um, so I moved to LA in 2012. By this point, I had about seven years of PR experience under my belt. And again, that sense of longing and that sense of belonging and that sense of wanting to connect, it, it was there. And so being in this new city, not having a lot of friends, not knowing a lot of people except for my now husband, I did what most girls do when they move to Los Angeles, which was start a blog. It was my way of connecting with people and meeting people. I was still doing my PR stuff on the side. And I was never really good at blogging in terms of I loved to write, I loved to write content, but the kind of blogging that I was doing was very fashion, lifestyle, beauty related. And that just really wasn't me. I was trying to fit into this idea of what I saw happening in LA. I wanted to be, you know, the beautiful girl on Instagram that was, you know, getting invited to sit front row at fashion week and wearing the best clothes and doing all of this. And, you know, I could fake it to a point but I feel like with anything, if we're not living in integrity and if we're not living in authenticity, it's going to catch up for, with you. And the universe just has this way of kind of making it all crash down. So behind the scenes, I was racking up a lot of debt, over $30,000 of debt. I was hiding it from my husband because I felt so much shame around, you know, I'm just trying to like keep up. I'm trying to belong. I, I want to look just like everybody else. And that costs money and slowly but surely over two and a half years, I had racked up this debt. My husband found out. Of course, he called me out and called me in on that. He was like, when were you going to tell me about the credit card? And I was like, never, because <laughs> I'm so delusional. I was going to like figure I was going to hit some big PR campaign and figure this out. But this moment of, you know, I was getting burnout with my PR work, but I had this experience. I was trying so hard to be somebody else to try to fit in, to try to be accepted. I this sense of, of truly believing in myself and being worthy of what I wanted didn't exist. I didn't think that I could get what I wanted because I didn't think that what I wanted was possible for people like me. I could see it being possible for other people, but that was the story that I made up and told myself. And so this really led me to having to, again, go back to that grit. I have to figure this out. I, I can't like I'm now in, in massive debt. No one's coming to save me. Like I've got to get out of my delusion. I've got to get out of my denial. And how do I figure this out? And so the one thing that I knew that I was good at because of my background in PR was that early on in my social media side hustle career, I figured out how to monetize my Instagram, my online platform pretty quickly because I knew how to pitch myself. And so I started to have people come to me and they were like, hey, Julie, like, how is it that you have no followers and you're pitching yourself to these brands and you're, you know, you're making $5,000, $2,500, you're making consistent money working with brands and, and creating content online, but I'm making like $5 off of some affiliate link with a shirt that I'm wearing. And it was because I knew how to effectively pitch from my background in PR. And so when I finally, after you know a couple of years of trying to be like everybody else, when I finally started to really listen and watch what was happening around me, I was like, huh, okay, I'm $30,000 in the hole. Clearly me trying to be like everybody else isn't working, but people are noticing that I'm monetizing my brand and that's that's interesting to them. Like mm -hmm. they want to know more about that because they want that for themselves. So how could I show up and support these women that want that? So I started to consult, started to kind of manage, started to negotiate deals for other at the time bloggers on their behalf. And when I started to hit a wall and meet 
that one-on-one -on -one capacity, I was like, okay, well, how, how can I get this? How can I be a one to many? How can I get this out more? This was about 2016. So this was about three years of like the debt decline, you know, the rock bottom moment of that still doing my PR side hustle, but being so burnt out with that, wanting to expand my own message and, and my own possibilities in the world. And, um, this idea of online courses started to kind of take hold. And, you know, I love to Google, I love to research, I love, you know, I'm a hustler, so I'm gonna figure it out. And I started seeing all these people create courses about anything under the sun. You wanna become a yoga instructor, take this course. You wanna grow on Pinterest, take this course. You wanna invest in, you know, commercial real estate, take this course. And I started looking and I was like, there are no, at the time, I'm like, there are no courses that are teaching content creators how to monetize online. There's no courses teaching people how to pitch. There's no courses teaching people the foundations of PR and how to use publicity to build their brand and to monetize their brand. So I created it. In 2016, I created a course called Pitch It Perfect. And that course single-handedly completely changed my life and the entire trajectory of my business. I slowly but surely started to build that out, started to learn things that then became one of my signature programs. Um, and then of course, you know, a multitude of other things that kind of happened then. Um, I also started a podcast called The Influencer Podcast and it was kind of this perfect marriage of, I had this offer, right, Rebecca, this course, this, this thing that was super specific to a certain type of person that needed it that was gonna help them make money and change their own lives. And then I had this podcast that became this just free marketing engine, this great organic marketing engine that was providing immense value for people for free. And it was those two things that kind of came together and it, and it created my own personal brand. And so that is essentially how I got started. That's what I do, that's who I serve. And now I show up in various ways through coaching and now with my book to teach other people how to do the same. That's, that's awesome. And like, congratulations on all your success. And that's the thing is that you were smart enough to realize, okay, there's, there's a gap here and that's what you were meant to do. I think some, so many times we are, I mean, I lived in California for, you know, 11 years and, you know, I lived in Newport beach like, you, you, and you try and fit yourself into this box of something, even being a fitness person online, you're like, oh, I should do it this way. And then you're like, well, hang on a second. Like that doesn't feel right. That's not me. Um, and as soon as you start to just show up authentically as yourself, that's where you get, I mean, I have loads of people who are, you know, starting a side hustle and they're like, oh, well, you know, my Instagram doesn't look like yours. And I was even having a conversation last night um, with, with my partner, Luke, and I, we were saying like the, when we do team trainings for things, there's no point like bringing his people into my people and, and sending my people to listen to his call because they don't want that. They don't want, they want a little bit of it. They want a little bit of somebody else, but you will attract like who you are, like you trying to build a business, just be yourself and you're going to start to attract those people into it. So I think that's, that's amazing. Like what you did. I have a question when you were younger and you know, you were talking about your parents and your upbringing, what was it that you saw that made you realize that there was something more in life? Like I remember to the day, like going to London and like seeing different types of cars and different types of houses, but like that, and that's because once your mind expands, it can't go back to its original state. So right. what, what did you see that made you realize that there's something else out there? Yeah. So I think for me, it was, you know, first I would watch, it was the movies that I would watch, you know, movies like the wizard of Oz that talked about this place called Oz that had these new possibilities. I would watch Annie on repeat, you know, orphan Annie that then goes and like, it's adopted by this rich family, like, you know, and so this idea, I would see things on TV. Um, but when my parents split, when I was seven years old and my mom and I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, which is still kind of a small town, but much bigger from where I came from, it really started to unlock so much for me. I started to see different different ways that people were living, different ways that people worship, different types of people, types, types of cultures, types of colors of people. Where I was from, it was predominantly a white Christian small town. So to be blown away by all of these different thought systems and belief systems, 
systems and cultures and structures. And I just, I loved it. I, I, it completely blew my mind. And then I started meeting these people that had like ice makers in their house and TVs in their vans and pools in their backyard. And I was just like, wow, people live this way. People have two stories in their house. And for little old me, it just blew my mind. This idea that, you know, you can have more than just what is in front of you. So in some ways it was, it was the things that I didn't see that I was like, there's got to be more to this. And then new things that I saw, I was like, wow, this is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't travel a ton when I was younger because we didn't have the money to. But even when I was in college, I went to New York City for the first time. And and I had only been there once. And I was like, I'm moving here. This is where I'm going. And I ended up moving there right after college. I didn't have a job, had no place to live, had no, I, like, no money. I was in student loan debt. But I just, I, I wanted that so bad. I wanted to experience something more. You, you said you wanted it so bad. And I think that's the thing that people go, well, it's all right for you, but it's not. You just figured it out and you had the great, you're like, I didn't have any money and I moved there. I'm like, I don't have any money and I moved to America. Like I, right. you just figure it out. So, so how do you coach with, how do you coach people? How do you talk to people who say that they want something, but they're clearly their actions are just not showing it. I mean, the why is not big enough. You know, what's the reason? And, and how, if somebody's listening to this right now, because I, I know, I know my audience, they're like, no, I really, I really want to live there. I really want to go to this event. I really want to do this, but I don't have the money. But, yeah, there's always that but. There's always so, that but. How do you get thing, but? <laughs> right, there's always the but. The first thing that I say with people is a, you got to get clear on what it is that you want. And what most people come to me and they just say, Julie, I don't know what I want. So like, how can I get what I want? Because I don't know what I want. And what I always say back is like, well, of course you know what you want because you know what you don't want. So start there because knowing what you don't want is going to be a clear indication. It's going to direct you on the path of what it is that you do want. So for me, it's like growing up with not a lot of money. I didn't want to grow up. I didn't want to, I didn't want that to be the rest of my life. I didn't want my kids to grow up with not a lot of money. So it's like, I didn't know how to make a lot of money, but I knew that I did not want to be somebody living paycheck to paycheck. I knew that I did not want somebody. And even I knew I was somebody that didn't want to live in debt and I still got myself in debt, which is just a mindset thing that I'm happy to talk about. But it's sometimes we kind of have to fall on our face. We, we have to be so sick and tired of our own BS and so sick and tired of being sick and tired to actually make the transformation. We can think things all day long, but if our actions aren't backing it up, it doesn't matter. So once you get clear on what it is that you want by knowing what it is that you don't want, you've got to start believing in the possibility. And the way to do that, I feel, is that you have to know what your why is. Like, why do you want this so bad? And that why has got to be greater than any of the excuses that you could have for not going after it. So if you're, if it's so easy for you to be like, oh, well, I would love to move, but it's going to be so expensive and I don't have a job and I don't, well, then your why for moving is, is not great enough. Like how bad do you really want to try this thing out? Because this is not a dress, dress rehearsal. Like this is life right now. I, you know, I was just talking to my husband the other day. I'm 38 years old. My husband's 52 and I've been having these moments of awareness. I'll just look at him and I'm like, you know, that this right now is our life. Like this is life right now. 10, 20 years from now, we're gonna look back and be like that, that we were living life in that moment. And I think that we really have to come to that awareness every single day of our lives, whether we're 20 years old or 60 years old. It, this idea that we, and I was this way, it was like I was always waiting for my externals to change in order for my life to begin. It was like, you know, well, once I get the job, then X, Y, and Z, once I, once I get the, the, the husband, once I, you know, once I get the guy, once I get the kids, once I get the house, once I get the car, once I get that, then my life will start. And it's like, no, li life is right now. So we're either showing up to it and our actions are backing that up or we're not. And so I think that that's really the biggest thing is that your why, for me, I have to have a purpose that is as if my life depended on it or as if my children's lives depended on it. Like my business has to be successful because if it's not, like I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to feed my kids. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I don't know. I don't have any other option. And so, yes, it, it sounds incredibly extreme and, and intense, but I feel like you need that kind of energy 
in order to move forward because the excuses are also incredibly intense and incredibly powerful. And if your why is not more powerful than the excuses that you have for it, you're, you're, you're not going to be an internet or energetic match for what it is that you want. You're mm -hmm. not going to be able to show up. God, you just like speak in my language. And I love what you said about this is not a dress rehearsal. Like this needs to be said more. And I think that that is such a great line to, to help people get out of their own way. Are you ever fearful that something's not going to work? What do you do with fear? Like what's your relationship with fear? Like, are you worried? Oh my goodness, I'm going to launch this book and it's going to be a disaster, right? Because most people go, I'm going to launch something. I'm going to start a business and it's just not going to work. Like, does that come into your head? Oh yeah. I mean, I think that that, that the fear is always going to be there. And I, and here's the thing too, with fear, you know, and because most of us like, we'll just take, you know, investing in yourself, right? Because there, and this could be time or money, right? There's, there's this, the pro and con with like investing versus not investing, spending versus saving, you know, however you want to look at it. And I feel like if you're a fairly well-off, high wealth individual right now, like your bandwidth to go all in to invest, it's probably going to be a little bit easier. Um, you know, if you have, if you are looking at your life and your perspective of, as if I'm just starting out or I have lower means, it may be harder, you know, but I say that it's like you, you have to get a better job if you can, you have to improve your habits so you can earn more. And I think the big thing is that we, we all have to avoid what is called the status quo bias. So the status quo bias is simply when you are afraid to change your current circumstances because of circumstances externally are beyond your control. For example, like I mentioned earlier about moving, moving somewhere else for a better life or job or circumstance. Most people don't do it or won't do it. They think that it's hard enough changing their basic, their basic circumstances in their life. And so they just don't do it, even though it's the basic circumstances in their life that's actually causing them suffering and pain. So how you overcome that you know, I think to some degree it's it's cultural. You know, there's some dynamics to that. I think that it's a lot easier to move when you feel that freedom is possible for you. So going back to that belief system of like, again, it may be cultural what you see around you. Like when I was growing up, not a lot of people had a lot of money. And so it would have been so easy for me to say like, and I did at times, well, you know, me having a better life, that doesn't happen for people like me. That only happens with people that have money or that only happens with that type of person. So I could have been a victim to my culture. I could have been a victim to that circumstance. I could have been a victim to whatever that status quo was. But how is that going to get me out of the suffering and pain and, and moving into what I really wanted? So I think how to really overcome it no matter where you're at, no matter if you have money or you don't have money, people have got to have something to believe in that is greater than, than themselves. It is what instills in us this desire to keep going, to believe, to trust, to be loving, to be kind, to be caring, to be communal, to give back. I think that a lot of people don't believe in something greater than themselves. They may say that they do, but their daily actions don't back it up. Mm -hmm. And so that is what I think ends up causing a massive decay in our own self-worthiness and our own belief system because we can't see past what is right in front of us. Yeah, and that's so interesting with fear as well because you know you could say, well, you know, I'm I'm more fearful because I haven't got that much as much money. Right. But the person who's just you know made a million dollars could be more fearful of losing it than you even know. So there's a whole comparison thing too, like. Right. Don't even compare to somebody who's, you know, who you think, and it's all, it's all what you think anyway, like somebody right. who's, who's, who's a multimillionaire could have more, you know, um, worry about losing the money that they'd earned rather than somebody who's, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, but just kind of like, you know, more chilled about it. They're like, oh, great. If money comes in, it comes in. If it doesn't, it doesn't like, you know, I'm just going to keep living every day as if it was my last. So I think so often we get in our head, be like, well, it's okay for you because they have this or they have that. Um, and I love that what you're talking about fear. All right, so let's break it down then. When when somebody's like, great, I'm I'm ready to go. I'm taking action. You you say you talk about in your Instagram a little bit about like staying on task. And I think a lot of people get distracted. I mean, I can get distracted. I'm doing one thing and then my phone beeps and I'm like onto something else. 
Um, give us a few of those tips. I know that you can also sign up for some stuff on your website too to get loads of amazing like free tips that she's given out. Um, but but tell me a few things of how you stay on task. Yeah, the first for me is is this idea of awareness. So let's say that you're working on something and then you get get easily distracted and you're just like, you know, oh, I can't figure this out. Or why does this always happen to me? Or, you know, why can't, why am I so overwhelmed? This is so frustrating. You have to get, you have to be aware and get honest with yourself about, yes, it's exhausting, but what does that story that you're telling yourself, what does that validate? And, and why do you keep saying that to yourself? So for a lot of people and, and myself included, I will have this belief that it takes a lot of pain in order to gain or that I have to that in order for anything successful to happen, I have to suffer and there must be a sacrifice. There must be a sacrifice. And so what that does is that we don't really believe in the worthiness to receive just because we're who we are, just because we're these beautiful human beings on this planet. So if you don't even believe you deserve the business that you want in the first place, then how are you going to be able to make it happen? So you'll actually you'll actually be able to get what you want once you start believing it. So it's first having the awareness of like, what is the payoff in me thinking these frustrating, overwhelming thoughts that I'm having? That's the first thing. The second thing is kind of a clarity and confidence piece. So the other thing that I see happen is that people aren't aware. And so they don't know where these stories are coming from. They don't know the payoff, which we just talked about. The second thing is people wait for confidence in order to get the clarity to take action. They're like, okay, well, once I'm confident in this, then I'm gonna know what to do. Then I can niche down, then I can figure it out. When in fact, it's the clarity that creates the confidence, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And so people are sitting here, they're waiting, they're like, where's the confidence, where's the, and it's like, well, you don't have any confidence because you're basically in a car in neutral idling. It's like, you can't get to your destination because you're, hammering down on the gas pedal, but you're not going anywhere because your gear is an idle. So move the gear to drive, start driving, and then you're going to get the confidence along the way about where you need to go on your path. And so that's, I think, another big clear dist distinction for people is to stop waiting for the confidence to give you clarity because it's the clarity that actually creates the confidence. And you get the clarity by testing things out by taking action by not being afraid to get it wrong that's where we all learn so even if it's just a small step and i think that's that's a third thing that i'll that i'll say is keeping it really simple simple is significant and really taking it one day at a time is what allows us to to kind of underwhelm the situation um i think overwhelm can actually be a good motivator i mean i am i am a gritty person but i feel like overwhelm is just when we see what's possible, but we haven't caught up to it yet. And so it, it can be very overwhelming for us. But I think that you can use that as a compass. And and once you have, once you start testing things out, which is you're gonna gain clarity from that, then you start building the confidence to keep going. Then you can start accomplishing the things that you want. But I like to keep things very like one day at a time because that's going to that's going to allow it to be a little bit of a lower barrier of, of entry, a lower hanging fruit for you to actually see what you're accomplishing and, and to take these small tasks and to get them done because that's also going to give you more confidence. Um, I do have a, a free guide um, if anyone wants to go, uh, juliesolomon.net slash clarity, um, where you can get, it's like a 45 minute um, kind of mini course that kind of walks you through uh, five steps to gain more confidence and clarity. But those are three things that people can start really tapping into today. Yeah, you are so talking my language when you're just talking about confidence, clarity, action. I'm like, you will never get any, it's impossible. You can't just sit there and all of a sudden like confidence is just gonna start pouring on you. You have a shower and in the water, there's a little bit of confidence in there. Like it just doesn't work like that. Like the only way that you can ever get any more confidence is by going out there and trying it. I mean, the first few times that you create a course, you look back, the first few YouTube videos I had, I look back, I'm like, wow, what shorts was I wearing? What was the lighting like? It's yeah. windy. I mean, there's, you just can't progress. You just can't make any progress unless you, you start somewhere. So, and no one even cares. People are so worried about what other people are thinking, but they're not. People are worried about what they're thinking too. You know, we, we just get in our heads. As we close this out, what, Julie, is your definition of grit? Mm, I think my definition of grit is what comes up for me is this creative courage. Mm -hmm. 
this courage to be to, to create and and when we say creative that may seem artistic for some people but that's not what I mean it's it's the courage to create the courage to to stand out of the box the courage to really believe in yourself and let yourself shine I love that that that's so important it is it's great is having just the courage to be yourself to be authentic and just to just to go for it so oh my goodness so many amazing nuggets today like I could I think we could like chat all day we would just literally like put the worlds to rights um but where can everybody find you on social media and uh, and get your book Yes, thank you so much. So I tend to hang out the most on Instagram. You can find me at Jules Solomon, J-U-L-S-S-O-L-O-M-O-N. Feel free to DM me. I, we, I'm we i in there a lot. My team's amazing. They're in there all the time. We're, we're here to support you in any way that we can. Um, since you are obviously podcast listeners, I have the Influencer Podcast. You can listen to that wherever you love to listen to podcasts. I drop a new episode every Wednesday. Um, I have been doing it for five years now, every single Wednesday. So there's a ton of content that you could even kind of dive back into. Um, if you are someone who is wanting to, you know, start, grow or build, um, your personal brand and, um, and then juliesolomon.net is my website where you can find all the information about me. And then of course my book, get what you want, how to go from unseen to unstoppable. You can get it wherever books are sold. Or if you're an audiobook listener, we do have an audiobook as well. So you can get it on audible. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to put all of the links in the description below. So make sure that you guys go and follow her, go give her lots of love. And uh, thank you so much, Julie, for being on the show. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye.